Travelers crossing international borders by plane do not generally consider whether they might fly over dangerous areas. The destruction of Malaysian Airlines MH17, however, has revealed that many passengers have been running a fatal risk. Before last Thursday, Ukrainian airspace had some 350 civilian planes passing through it every day. Almost half could be international flights. A European air traffic control manager on Friday discussed the restrictions in place before those hundreds of people were killed. The airspace restrictions closing the airspace in eastern Ukraine from ground to 32,000 feet, which were put in force on Monday the 14th of July, there was some hours later, there was a similar notification published by the Russian authority, but that was to the airspace to the east of that, but that also applied from ground to 32,000 feet, so there's no incompatibility between the two informations that were published. After MH17 was shot down, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration expanded existing bans on flights. For American aircraft, as of Thursday the 17th, the FAA has issued flight prohibitions in eastern Ukraine, the Crimea region, Libya, Iraq and North Korea. It issued advisories which are neither binding nor regulatory, yet are strongly suggestive of warnings such as for Syria, Yemen and Afghanistan. Decisions by countries and international organizations on airspace to designate as no-fly zones are usually taken in a military context, for instance over Iraq between 1991 and 93, to prevent attacks against the Kurds, over Bosnia and Herzegovina between 1993 and 95 to neutralize Serbian air power, and Libya in 2011 to prevent attacks on civilian targets. Many analysts believe the MH17 killings could have been avoided if there had been an absolute ban on civilian flights over eastern Ukraine. The sky there has been clear since the day after.